Hey guys, Jessie here from Jessie on a Journey. I usually do role play and kind of tips videos, but today I thought I would try something a little bit different. Um, I might play around with this mic too because I'm not sure. Well, anyway, um, something I don't talk about a ton but, um, that I will is that I do deal with anxiety and of course ASMR is one awesome way that I help manage that in another way um, is kind of painting and, and art and when I say that I am really not good at these things they're just things I enjoy um, I'm actually really bad at them so this little experiment right now could be interesting, but this seems like something that will tell me exactly what to do, which will be nice. <laughs> so hopefully it's foolproof, uh, but who knows with me. Uh, I woke up this morning, kind of have a lot on my plate with work, with travel blogging, a lot of um, different assignments and things, but I thought, you know what, people are always telling me I should meditate or do yoga when I wake up instead of diving right into work or, you know, something meditative. So I thought this would be something nice to do for a video as well as for my own sanity today. And also my hair is in a bun and I'm wearing a giant Leonardo DiCaprio t-shirt. So I didn't want to actually be in the video. So this was also a way to get out of that. Okay. So like I said, I might be playing with this mic a bit to see what sounds the best. Um, I tried to find at least a travel themed <laughs> engraving art. This was the closest I could come. I mean, they're in the woods. I like to hike in the woods. So, uh, yeah, they didn't really have a travel one, but you can also easily pack this. It's really thin. Um, so, it could be travel related. I do actually bring these traveling. I also have um, like a, a sketchbook that when you draw in it, it turns to glitter writing. So uh, that will be another, another video. Okay, so let's see what I need to do with this. So this is an engraving. And I guess this guy is a wizard. I mean, he is a wizard, obviously. And this is a troll, I guess. Okay. Oh, it says wizard magician. Oh, never mind. That's not what I'm So let's read the instructions. The project includes a reprinted board. Grape cutter and a practice piece. <laughs> I definitely probably need this practice piece. Experiment with different techniques using your practice board. Create fine lines and detail with the points of the tool and broader strokes using the side. Begin at the top of your board and work your way down. Prevent fingertips from being left on the board by placing a sheet of paper underneath your hand. While working on your picture, brush off excess scrapings with a damp cloth. Okay, cool. I think I can manage this. Okay, so let's open this up. I want to try to do this quietly. Also, like I said, it is first thing in the morning, so you might hear me drinking coffee. And that is just something that there's no way around. I don't need it, but it makes me very happy. Trying not to get any squeaking. There we go. This should just be 
this simple. Students practice board. Like, um, this is already very confusing, but okay. I think that I should just be able to uh, draw this wizard dude, so. simple for someone like me. I'm just going to do the outlines. Okay. So, I will chat to you while I do this. What is exciting in my life? Um, well, since this is a travel channel, I just got back a little bit, well, two trips. Namibia, which was very, very awesome. Um, there are, um, I have a list in my head of kind of the most underrated destinations in the world. And on that list is, I guess, four places. Really the two main ones. One is Namibia. The other is Slovenia. I am hardcore all about Slovenia. I can't believe more people will go there. It's like so affordable, so beautiful, so safe. The city center doesn't allow cars, so it's super peaceful. So like I, every day, after uh, doing whatever, I would head into the city center. Well, not really head there. It's a really small city. You just walk there. And I would find a little you know, cafe on the water. And there's, you know, a river running through the city. And I would have a nice two euro glass of wine and just relax the book or maybe do a little bit of writing about the trip. It was awesome. I wish I could do that here. I mean, I live in New York City for those of you who don't know. I will say it is, it's calmer than, than people think, than the stereotype, because there are places that aren't Times Square and Midtown, that are where most local people hang out. You can easily go to the, the West Village and kind of wander these sleepy streets or Soho and kind of get away from the crowds. Um, but yeah, it was beautiful. And another thing that I really love about Slovenia is that uh, you can, sorry, Listening to my neighbors run up and down the stairs for no reason. Um, you can home base in Ljubljana, the capital. It's, when I say Ljubljana, that is that capital that maybe you've seen that looks like it's spelled Ljubljana. <laughs> Very, it's the, kind of the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It's spelling wise, but you can home base there, and then you can. Um, take day trips to like beautiful lakes and hiking trails and uh, gorges and other things. So, that's an underrated place for me. But anyway, Namibia is where I just went. And, by the way, I'm doing my own interpretation of what this is supposed to be, so. Maybe it won't be just like the photo, but I don't want to copy someone else's art. I'm going to do my own art. I think that looks very cool. Anyway, um, Namibia. I was very surprised. I'll, I'll admit I didn't know much about Namibia. And it's very German. There were uh, lots and lots of Germans there. Uh, Namibia was ruled by Germany at one point, so that makes sense. But 
in this place, Swakat Mon, which is the this little adventure town in the desert. It reminded me of Phoenix, Arizona, but like a Namibian. like palm lined houses and you've got the, the beach right there and everyone's sandboarding and there's a mix of like seafood restaurants and like German pubs so very cool I like everyone there speaks German so it's very cool um, a lot of fun things to do there uh, I did stay in the city a bit in the capital I mean in Windhoek I'll admit we didn't spend a ton of time there, so I don't know a lot, but if you do go there, one place you should definitely, definitely go is Joe's Beer House. It is this crazy, of course there is Namibian beer. South Africa has the wine, Namibia has the beer. Um, like, my neighbors, wow, just, they're so loud. Um, I'm also the only one in this building who doesn't have a pet, so, like, there's always, like, dogs running around and stuff. Um, anyway, Joe's Beer House is this crazy kind of, like, indoor-outdoor restaurant with, like, koi ponds and, like, boats hanging from trees and, like, clocks hanging from the ceiling and from the trees and, like, just, like, all kinds of crazy antiques and artifacts and things hanging from everywhere. This is actually challenging right now. Like, it doesn't always come off. Okay, whatever. Like I said, this is my interpretation. Um, we didn't go here, but Salsa's Filet in Namibia is where they have the highest dunes, uh, they say the highest dunes in the world. Uh, it could be true. There's kind of a lot of different places that say that. Also because of the wind and things and then, you know, moving of the earth. Sand dunes are changing all of the time. This already looks like art. Wow, I'm an artist. Um, so we also took a drive up to the Skeleton Coast which is known for having lots of like whale bones and um, uh, shipwrecks and there have been a ton of shipwrecks there but to be honest there aren't a ton you can see uh, but check that when you go because that's always changing um, um, when we went, there wasn't many shipwrecks to see, but it was a very cool kind of like secluded, remote area. That was cool. Um, it's kind of creepy. We were joking that like there was this crow at the hotel. And, like we didn't leave, and he kept crowing at us, whatever the word is. And we were joking that he was like the moderator from the Hunger Games, like. You will never leave Skeleton Ghost. Of course, he was just a crow, but it was kind of just that feeling of like very ominous, cloudy. Um, but it was cool. It was it's a national park, so that was nice. And there you can go to a coffee sip, uh, Cape Cross, which is I believe the largest breeding colony for, for seals in the world. If you go there, definitely bring like a, a gas mask because they smell so bad, but they're so cute and there are so many of them, like hundreds or thousands of them, so I definitely believed that claim that uh, it's the largest in the world because I've been to a few others and none were like this. Whoa, so many seals. Um, there's a boardwalk that you can go down and take photos and you don't have to worry about like a seal like running at you because they can be aggressive sometimes. Okay, so what else? Oh, I visited a Himba village. Well, I was there. 
it was very cool because it's like, you know, a traditional village. The women don't wear, they wear, um, they're topless with these kind of like, I guess, rawhide skirts. And, you know, everything they wear symbolizes something. And if they wear their hair this way, it means something else. It's really, really kind of interesting to learn about their way of life. And those kind of experiences to me can often feel like human zoos, like, these people exist for us to like gawk at and like give money, but this did not feel like that. It was, um, I had a really good guide named George, and he, if you go to my blog, Jesse on a Journey, and you look at any of my Namibia posts, I have his information uh, listed there and the company he works for because I thought they were quite amazing. Um, anyway, he is. There's another group called the Herero tribe and the Hindus and the Hereros. When they came to Namibia originally, did, were the same. And then they kind of branched apart. So George did have some kind of, you know, connection to the Hindus and he, he could speak Hindu. Um, so it wasn't like something where we went and like paid tickets or whatever. It was. Um, we, well, he did, he, we, we were in the car for part of it. He drove around the nearest town, Paro, which is known for being near all the hippos. Um, and he asked him a woman if he could come to the village tomorrow with, with, uh, with his group, so, um, that was really cool because it felt just very like off the cuff of it. We stayed at this place called the, um, oh, I didn't I said Paro. I did not mean to say that. That's Bhutan. Um, it's outside of Apuro. Sorry. Um, we stayed at the Apuro Lodge and that was amazing. Super budget friendly. And, um, it's, not luxury, luxury, but it felt, I cannot get this guy, felt, hmm, it felt very uh, comfortable. You'll definitely want some bug spray for that area though, it, it, but they have an infinity, an infinity pool, and um, you can like watch these amazing sunrises and sunsets. I, okay. I need to post a link at the bottom of this video that's like upstairs neighbor and like it's these two people that are like throwing bowling balls around and like um like bringing their cell phones to the ground it's hysterical but i kind of feel like it's happening to me right now granted i never noticed the noise until i go to make these videos it's like Hopefully my voice is soothing you over the bowling balls. It really is crazy though, because if you live in New York City, like I would like to meet someone making like amazing ASMR videos in New York City. They must have soundproofed their room because if I go in my room, I've got honking and subways. If I go in the kitchen, I've got the airport and the airplane. And if I go in this middle room, which is pretty quiet, I have people above me paying around, always. The girl next door to me is also a um, artist, performer of some sort. And she is super loud, but she's also very cool because if I say like, hey, I'm recording from this time to this time, or like, can you not? at this time. She's very respectful, so I feel like I can't really, like, text the girl upstairs and be like, stop walking. <laughs> that would be rude. Anyway, enough complaining. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to make art. I mean, this could be pretty much sold in a gallery. It's so good. <laughs> Sarcasm. This is not good because it's actually very hard. Anyone does these engravings and gives me any, has any tips for me, that would be cool. I, um, 
you'll admit I am more painting type of person. Um, really enjoy painting. One more thing about the, the noise. It sounds like they're rearranging furniture. And maybe they are. However, it sounds like this all the time. It's like, like every day. It's just, are they moving furniture every day? I just have Um, the other trip I recently went on was Seattle, and that was, sorry, I keep wiping my uh, hands on, this reminds me of the dentist, which is a not relaxing visual. Obviously, the seafood, uh, quite amazing. You know, they, Seattle as a whole has a very kind of like go local attitude, which is very cool. Um, okay, I swear I'm done. I'm done complaining. <laughs> um, Just defeating me. The, the package doesn't really give any tips on what to do when you reach this point. Um, I'm about to paint it. Let's see up here. My relaxing activity. <laughs> I want to at least get the skull. Um, anyway. Uh, Seattle has amazing, amazing seafood. So to go for that, I also was a big fan of Belltown. They have so many really cool like cocktail bars, like the whole speakeasy style cocktail bars, but with really good drinks because um, I'm actually a cocktail guy in New York City. And one misconception that people have, that is the happiest skull I've ever seen. Um, is that, you know, like, Prohibition era was full of these delicious cocktails. And that's just not very really true. Yes, there were speakeasies. However, um, the quality of the cocktail speaks to before Prohibition. And that is when cocktails were getting very creative with four very specific ingredients. <laughs> this is funny. Um, and those ingredients, in the traditional definition of a cocktail, are water, and that could be ice, sugar, and you know, that could be agave, or simple syrup, or honey, or, you know, some kind of sugar. Um, the spirit itself, which is, you know, starts like beer and wine as a fermented beverage, but then is distilled, and that's what makes it different from beer and wine. And then the main ingredient, well not the main, but the one people forget, bitters. Bitters are kind of these herbs and shrubs with alcohol in them that are highly, highly concentrated. So, if you... <laughs> If you um, just put a little bit into a drink, uh, you can totally change the um, the kind of makeup of a cocktail and what you're drinking. So they're really cool. I love going to bars that make their own and kind of get very creative with what's in them. 
feel like lavender bitters seems to be the cool thing. You go to bathtub gin and cup, which you enter to a back alley, something I would not do in New York City, but in Seattle it's cool. And I actually asked a local where the bad areas of Seattle were, and he said there was none, so I don't know if that's true. But, um, and the upstairs, which is super cool. You enter this kind of like old house, and you walk in some weird things like. Like, yeah, like someone's apartment with like thrift store furniture and kind of mismatched weathered looking walls. That old, not paisley, but that kind of wallpaper. And, but they have this like really freaky modern art, so it's kind of like old meets the new. A lot of great restaurants as well. Um, of all kinds. Um, I'd like to dim the weather. I liked, um, oh, where did we go? No, all the names are just kidding. Local 360 is good. It sources uh, all its ingredients from 360 miles of Seattle. Uh, we went to Shiro, which is, if you've seen Jiro, Dreams of Sushi, Shiro was his apprentice. That was very tasty and surprisingly affordable. Um, Frolic, which was a, uh, it was pretty good. I really liked their octopus, though. It was like super tender. Um, there was one restaurant I went to in Ballard that was so good, and the name is just escaping my brain right now. But honestly, there was nowhere that we ate that we were like, oh, this isn't good. A lot of pinball. I noticed there's a lot of pinball. They have a pinball kind of museum. I think it was $15, all you can play. So that's kind of fun. But if, regardless, if you don't want to pay 15, a lot of the bars have pinball. Seattle's super walkable. If you, um, oh, you definitely need to eat at the Pike Brewery. Funny enough, okay, they're a brewery. And you think, okay, brew pub, brew burgers, and whatever. And they have that, but it's super local. They even, like, their condiments, everything's organic and local. And the beers are. I, uh, the guy I went with, he homebrews. And he was, like, super impressed with Pike. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. We went to Cloudburst Brewing, which one of the head brewers there used to brew at Pike. And that was also really good. Um, McMinions is another one. They're like fun. They always have like tons of art woven in. And, you know, their food is, it's good. It's definitely good. I wouldn't say don't eat there. Uh, nothing like I would like write home about, I guess you would say. But there was one thing actually that I liked. It was a Jamaican rice bowl. So it was like curry and rice and so unfortunately there are parts of this picture that I'm just not going to be able to do because I'm just not skilled in this realm, in this arena of, of art. Um, but this video is already decently long so I might stop here. I think this is going to be my ending project. Um, so I actually, I was going for this. I was going for an incomplete project. It's, it's modern art, you know. Got our wizard. Got our little happy skull. Oh, I sound like Papa Ross. Happy skull, like a happy cloud. Got the trees for some nature. Some grass. Some rocks. You can't really tell, but those are rocks. And this was a fairy. Enjoyed watching me be bad at art. Um, 
This was actually, it was relaxing, I'm glad. I like the idea of starting the day doing something that isn't work, whether it is meditating for 10 minutes or doing yoga or, or doing some art. Maybe next time, instead of doing something I'm really bad at, maybe I'll paint or draw instead, which I'm also bad at, but at least I'd be able to finish it. <laughs> anyway, it was really great waking up with you guys, and I hope that you feel nice and relaxed now.